it's robin and i am back again to talk to you guys about crime scene investigation so today i want to talk about the 10 things that i wish that i knew before i became a crime scene investigator so let's go ahead and jump right into this video so the first thing it is not like tv a lot of people i'm not sure why well actually i am i do know why it's called the csi effect people who are not in forensics they seem to think that it is just like what they see on tv like csi miami or ncis or law and order it is not like that in real life it is not that glamorous and the things that you may see on tv how they may be able to lift the fingerprint out of thin air or they just get a fingerprint off of this weird surface and the next thing you know they got a match in like 30 seconds like it does not work like that in real life so that's one thing that i wish i knew before i became a crime scene investigator well i mean i kind of already knew it wasn't really like that but you know what i mean i just <laughs> wish that other people knew that um so in case you thought that it's not really worked it doesn't work like that the second thing I wish that I knew before I became a crime scene investigator was that I would possibly experience burnout. So burnout is basically when you've been doing something for so long and then you just get tired of doing the same mundane things over and over. Now with crime scene investigation, every single day is different and that's what I like about it. But you are still doing the same type of processing. Like you can process things different ways, but it's still the same steps. Like you're still dispatched to a call. You still have to drive to the call. You still get there. You still talk to officers or talk to uh, detectives or the medical, uh, medical, legal, medical legal death investigators or you know whoever's at the scene you talk to the victims people are crying someone maybe did someone maybe shot so no one may be there at all you got to take pictures you got to do this you got to do this. it's the same steps even though it's different scenes you still take kind of sort of the same steps throughout every scene and um after a while you know it just gets like so routine that it just not necessarily boring but i can't really explain it you can just get burnt out by doing the same thing over and over especially if you're working overtime and you're working extra long hours like me i worked on the um overnight shift 10 30 p.m to 6 30 a.m and there are a lot of times when i did not get off early um, i mean not early if i did i did not get off on time i would actually get off um a few hours later there was one day where i actually worked up until maybe 1 p.m or 2 p.m the next day so that was just regular for the the department that i worked for at that time <clears throat> because they were just super short staffed and busy all the time and it was a high um that it was just a very, a very big city, so there was a lot of crime there. So, yeah, you just have to kind of expect that thing. So, um, burnout is something that I wish I understood more. So the third thing that I wish I knew before I became a crime scene investigator was the extent of the type of scenes that I would uh, be subjected to seeing all the time. Now, this is something that... I guess I should have expected just because I went through crime scene investigation classes and everything and I went to school for forensics and I saw different pictures and everything but it's not real until it's real like you don't really expect to see certain things all the time like literally I could see like four dead bodies in one night and then just go home and I don't know watch Spongebob or something like it's it's just really crazy the type of things that you see like you may go to one homicide then you may have a traffic fatality then you may have a sexual assault and then you may have a kid a, a kidnapping and then oh uh now it's raining outside and someone's drunk and so then there's another traffic fatality at four in the morning or five in the morning right before you're about to get in your shift so now you got to take another traffic fatality. like you can see multiple dead bodies in one day and um that was something that I guess I I knew was a possibility but I never actually really Put enough thought into it and how that could actually affect me um mentally like with my my mental health how that would um affect me like with you know my day-to-day -day activities now for a while it wasn't affecting me at all until i had someone who was close to me actually two people close to me um about a month apart were murdered um and it had nothing to one was a family member one was a close friend from high school um so yeah those after that that's when it really started affecting me when i started seeing how many crazy crime scenes i was going to and i was like oh my gosh like it's it's real now because like these are real people and it maybe when you don't know the people it doesn't seem real i always would say they seem like uh not to be insensitive or anything to anyone or any families but whenever i would go to scenes with a body there I, people ask me how come it doesn't affect me i'll just say because they look like movie props and they did until someone in my family was murdered and one of my close friends was murdered that's when i didn't look at them anymore as you know just a prop like they didn't look like props anymore now it's like this is a human, like, obviously it's a human being, but it's like, this is someone's loved one. Someone is calling their phone trying to see where they're at. And it's like, it's just, it's just eerie. It just gets a little eerie um, at times. If you're, if, 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 if you're not able to deal with those types of things, well, that's something that you should just, you know, think about. Keep in the back of your mind. It's a possibility. You never know what's going to happen. The fourth thing that I wish I knew before I became a crime scene investigator was uh, the work hours and the pay. So the pay is not all that great, in my opinion. I don't believe that crime scene investigators just across the country, I don't believe that crime scene investigators get paid as much as they should, especially if they are civilian. Um, I do think that crime scene investigators, just for the simple fact that we are going out to the same scenes that police officers do, um, we are dealing with the same criminals that they do, we are um, subjected to the same you know uh <clears throat> mental stressors and um situations and you know traumatic s scenes that they are going to um 
and we don't get paid as much as them. We should, every, every crime scene investigator, I think, whatever police department they are working for, I think that their base salary should start at the same price an officer's salary starts at, regardless of whether they have a gun or not. Because the fact that civilian crime scene investigators don't have guns, thats I mean, that's another thing. Like, we don't have guns, we're not protected, and we're still out here without a, 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 like a vest on or anything, and I could just get shot at any moment. I'm sitting here just trying to take pictures, and next thing you know, I could be getting killed too. So, like, no, it's, you know, there should be dangerous work pay or something. The fifth thing that I wish I knew before I became a crime scene investigator was uh, the fact that you could be called into work on the days that you were not scheduled to work, especially if you have court. So going to court on your days off is like, you don't have a choice. Um, if you are subpoenaed for something, then you have to be there. If you're not there, I mean, you're not going to go to jail, but you, you could get in trouble, um, like with supervisors and stuff like that. And you have to be there. I mean, it, it's a real trial. This is someone's life that is at stake. Either they are going to jail or they're going to be set free. So you have to be there. Like, and that was something that I guess I had never, I also never thought of that, okay, well now I'm working overnight. So I'm going to have, and yeah, if you have to work on the weekends and you have days off in the middle of the week like I had Tuesdays and Wednesdays off so court which is so funny they don't usually have the court on Monday so usually you're not a crime scene investigator isn't going to be needed until like Wednesday so I would always have court on my days off and have to go in after working overnight coming home in the morning Tuesday morning I would get home and then Wednesday night I'm off and um yeah, so Tuesday, yeah, that Tuesday night, I, I'm off of work and I don't have to go on Wednesday either. But that, you know, Wednesday morning, I would have to go into court after I'm getting off of work. And it's just like, it's tiresome. You can lose a lot of sleep. I, I guess that also just depends on the hours that you're working. So the sixth thing, another thing that I wish that I knew before becoming a crime scene investigator was how my emotional and mental health would be affected. So this is something I was just speaking at um, another forensic event here in the DFW area. And um, I spoke about, you know, how mental health affects um police officers, law, people in the law enforcement agencies, um, and also crime scene investigators. And we hear all the time about how the suicide rate for police officers are, is higher than that of normal citizens, um, which is definitely true, but they don't ever show the statistics for crime scene investigators. Um, yes, they, yes, police officers see a lot of crazy things. We do as well, because we're there with them, maybe not at everything, but majority of what sometimes they have little breaks where they can, you know, have a good scene where they go somewhere and they're actually being helpful to someone and they can help um, other people out or, um, you know, make someone's day better by saving someone's life or we, we don't have that. Like whenever we whenever we are called out, it's because it's someone's worst day. Like that day is their worst day. They're going through something really bad or they've just lost someone or that person themselves have just died. So, I mean, it can those type of things after a while can start to affect you mentally and um being exposed to that constantly constant trauma constant reminders like it got to a point where like i could like go into crime scene go into so many death scenes and murders and or even suicides or whatever like you know you can there's obviously going to be blood there so and being at the scene for a while um, you're going to start smelling the blood so i can like it's just weird like when i would go to supermarkets and this is why i went vegan for a while because when i would walk through the aisle past like the ground beef and ground beef and everything i could smell the blood and i and it smelled exactly like a human's blood like i could smell the iron in the blood that's what i was really smelling most likely is the iron in the blood but um yeah and i was just like oh i can't eat this like walking through the supermarket would make me think about crime scenes so you just have to be able to really separate those type of things and um you have to have a you have to have a strong mind and something that i said earlier today when i was speaking at the forensic event um is that you just need to be able to reach out for help if you feel as though you're not doing the best mentally if it seems are getting to you if you feel feeling overwhelmed or stressed you need to be able to have like someone in like a just just have a system in place so that you can talk to whoever it may be if it's a counselor if it's a psychiatrist if it's a friend if it's a parent your spouse sibling someone but you need someone who's going to be able to sit there listen to you understand give you great advice um or supervisors this is one thing that i did not have i did not have a tons of supervisory support in the um the department that i work for uh, there was one supervisor who I love absolutely to death and she was always there but when she left it's like the support was gone because she well she still supported from a distance but she wasn't there anymore but actually there you need someone there who is going to be able to support you and not just you but everyone everyone in the, and, and it's a lot for a forensic supervisors as well because you know they have a lot of paperwork and all that other stuff they have to go on you know worry about their mental health as well as others but you're in that position so it's your job you got to do it so just make sure that you have help in place and don't be afraid to reach out for help if you need it number seven the seventh thing that i wish i would uh i would have known prior to becoming a crime scene investigator was that i was going to eventually see someone die and um that is something that actually affected me and took a toll on my mental health because i wasn't prepared for it that's not something that you can be trained for that's not something that i learned in school that's not something i was ready for it was just crazy and it's even still today like it'll, it makes me upset like when I think about it because 
I, sh I wasn't, I shouldn't have been there when I was there, but that's because the officers didn't know what, that the person was still technically alive. And, um, and I was the one who noticed that the person was still alive because I was about to start taking pictures of them. And then I noticed that they were still breathing. I'm like, how did no one else notice that they were still, ugh, just, I don't even want to talk about it. But yeah, that I was going to see someone die in front of me. Seeing that guy, that took a huge toll on my mental health. And, um, I talked to a counselor about that situation. So yeah, again, make sure that you are, uh, Make sure that you are reaching out for help when you need it. If something is bothering you, if you've seen a traumatic scene and you need to debrief from that scene, then you have to make sure that you do that. Okay, number eight. The eighth thing that I wish I knew um, before I became a crime scene investigator, I wish I knew that you would really have to detach and disassociate your emotions and how to disassociate them um, properly and know how to turn them on and turn them back off. Now, um, for the most part, I did that completely well um and i think it was more so just out of personal safety and you know and because I, i'm stressing you know mental health you have to be able to um make sure that you are good first because if you are not good then you aren't going to be able to process your scene but um not only that but you have to be strong so that you can get your job done if you if you were there breaking down at a scene you can you can't work <laughs> so you have to be able to do your job and that means you have to be able to turn off your emotions and at some point when you get home and you you, you have to know how to turn them off at work but if things happen in your life that you know a crime scene related or like say for me for example when my friend got killed um from back home or when my cousin got killed i could people expected me to be you know non-emotional towards those things they're like you deal with crime scenes all the time you go to crime scenes all the time how is it that this is effect affecting you i'm like how is it not affecting me that's the whole reason why it's affecting me even more so because I know what it looks like for someone to be face down on the ground with a bullet in the back of their head. I know what it looks like for this and then to think that that was my cousin, to think that that was my close friend and now they're in that position. So you have to just be able to associate and disassociate when necessary. And that's not something that can be taught. That's only something that can be experienced. Okay, so number nine goes hand in hand with number eight, just knowing how to um, work your way through uh, tragedies that may happen in your life. Um, if someone that you know goes to jail or if you go to a crime scene where someone may be there that you know, you really shouldn't work it, but it just, I don't know how big your city is or you know how many people are in your unit, but if you have to work it, then you have to work it. So how to deal with tragedies that impact you personally or even if it's not at work, family related or friend related, if something happens, how are you gonna be able to deal with that as an individual and separate your job from your personal life? And number 10, the last thing that I wish I knew before I became a crime scene investigator was honestly just, uh, just I wish that I knew that every day was not, you're, you're not going to be saving lives every day. Like you're not, every day you're not going to be able to break a case. You're not, every day you're not going to, you know, get a great fingerprint that is, you know, the one that matches in the system that finds the suspect or you're not going to always find a bullet that matches another, another bullet that's in the, um, that's that that's already in the system in the nightman system like that just doesn't happen every that doesn't happen every day like you're not a superhero you're still a human you're you're not a robot you have to realize those things so that you can just you know function and you can be happy and just be happy with the progress that you're making in your career and um and not let anyone or anything bring you down if you don't find if you don't get those hits all the time or right away sometimes people go weeks or months without even getting any fingerprint matches so you just have to be ready to just deal with do what you can do the best that you can at your job and just take everything day by day write the best reports that you can excuse me yeah, write the best reports that you can take the best pictures that you can process the scenes the best way that you know how if you do not um know how to to do it or you think that you need help do not be afraid to ask for help and make sure that you have a good system in place a good supervisor a good manager a good sergeant a lieutenant whoever someone that you can talk to just make sure you have someone that you can talk to about things that are bothering you and if you are not comfortable in the situation that you were in or the department that you were in go to hr go to someone higher than whoever you're talking to if whoever's talking to you is making you uncomfortable with Ever the situation may be some I just know someone needs to hear this because there was a point where I needed to hear this do not be afraid to reach out for help especially if it is regarding something or someone that you were working with so um yes I just feel like someone needs to hear that and um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if there are in, any questions that I did not answer in this video that you all may want to know um just leave them in the comments below just ask me different questions um in the comments below and I will possibly make another video okay thanks for watching so much go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed and yeah thanks for the support okay have a good day bye